You know, when I first was looking at a ranch, it's an interesting story, my wife and I decided, okay, we're gonna get a property for our kids. And so I went out looking for a 200 acre ranch and came back with an 8,802 acre ranch. Hi, I'm Barry Ryan, and we are at the RK Ranch in Merced County, California. So I met a woman and she knew of this ranch and it had fallen through an escrow, so it was not listed. And she said, I know you want a small ranch. I'm gonna take you to a ranch that's way bigger than you want. However, it has every single thing you could ever want in a ranch. So you're gonna say to me, look, Here's the parts I like, here's the parts I don't, and then what I'm gonna do is go find you that ranch. So if you say you like hills, we'll find you that ranch. If you say you like flats, we'll find you that ranch. If you love hunting and you want cover, we'll find you that ranch. So the whole idea was, originally when I came here, just to look at it as an opportunity. Well, what turned out was, here we are. We wound up buying the original 8,802 acre ranch. It, it's amazing, and, and to me, the peel was recreating. So if someone's into recreating, well, there's not a better ranch. When I was a kid, I loved fishing. First thing we did was we took a, a pond, turned it into a two acre bass pond, and I started learning about growing fish. Well, there's an art to trophy bass ponds. To be able to do a trophy bass pond with trophy catfish and a large one and two pound bluegill, there is a whole science. And so we set up our pond, we set up feeders, and we really went through this process. And it's been now seven years. We got catfish 15 pounds, we got bass six and seven pounds, and we got bluegill almost two pounds. I mean, that's a nice bluegill. We also love to hunt. And so for my family, the opportunity to be able to hunt pig, wild boar, was amazing. The elk, from a visual standpoint, we just couldn't believe what we saw with the elk here. They live in the Whitaker Canyon. They're here a lot. We've never seen them in the flats here. And all of a sudden, they're just it appears they're just migrating, coming from San Luis. And we see them all over the place. My son, he is an avid hunter. So he's up at 5 in the morning, and he'll hike in, and he'll glass from these amazing vistas. And what's really cool is he'll look for blacktail, and if it's a morning where he doesn't really see anything or anything he wants, he'll then start to call and get the elk to come in, and he's got them within 10 feet, and, and it's pretty majestic. So the elk were in danger. And so what they did is years ago, they introduced the first herd, literally, as we're standing here, one ridge over. And so that was the kind of the nexus of where they introduced the Thule elk. And of course, now the herds are massive and they continue to thrive. We've had them run 20, 30 deep on the roads. It's, it's magical. And then of course, blacktail deer. We have unlimited blacktail deer, which is really amazing for the ranch. Quail and dove. We have the fly thoroughfare right here along the fence lines and in the trees and the canyons. And so, for me, I was much more of a functional, and yet the beauty just totally took over. And for my wife, when we came across some of the canyons, I'll never forget this one canyon, we have like a 300 foot drop, and it looks like our own Grand Canyon. And she just said, is this on the ranch? I go, baby, it's on the ranch. We have 30 some plus miles of Jeep trails, and also the ability to fish and recreate and hike and be with the family. There was, there's just, I never saw anything like it before in my life. The ranch is fully fenced, and so we have cross fencing and, and the scales for the cattle. We do run a lot of cattle out here. You can run cattle, yes. However, it is much more around the recreating and the hunting and the fishing and the family life. And cattle pay the taxes. What's really great about this ranch is the main roads are all maintained by California Department of Forestry, which is really cool. And so this is the main thoroughfare if there's a problem. The California Department of Forestry, the CDF um, headquarters, is right on the other side of that ridge as we speak. And so they, they come through once a year, once every other year, and make sure the roads are perfect, they're accessible, and so access has never been a problem with this ranch. We have about 100 acres, we call it the fig field. It's flat, 
and we've gone through and it was farmed for forever. We went through, just kind of cleaned up the rocks and so you can plant. We had barley grown one year for beer. It's, it's a crop for anybody. And there's year round water up in the canyon there. And so there's different parts of the ranch that there is year round water, which we love. If you look on a map, the North Fork and the South Fork of the Los Banos Creek meet right here on the property. If you follow the South Fork all the way down or the North Fork, there are spots where there's year round water all the time. And then of course we have natural springs on the property also. And Poncho Creek, which goes all the way up the canyon, it splits the ranch east to west. What's great about that is when you follow that back on um, up through the canyon, there's year round water there and it ends in what on the field climbing map is called Buck's Pass. And there's a reason why it's called Buck's Pass from you know, 100 years ago. Los Banos is right around the corner, so it's uh, 15, 20 minutes away, and Highway 5's right there. So for those people that live south of the Bay Area and are looking for a, a, a ranch on Highway 5, easy access, here we are. And you know, the thing about Silicon Valley is, the, it's, it's crazy, it's the hustle and bustle and the travel, and so if, for anybody that's interested in hiking, I mean, it's, if it's outdoor related, here it is. Well, as you can tell, it sounds like we got ourselves a dry spell. And so what was really great about today is it's weather and the cool part about the ranch is it gets enough weather to keep it green and the grass. And so now that it's stopped, maybe we gotta go take a look at the rest of the ranch. What do you think? When I first was looking at ranches, and I said I was looking for 200 acres, I wanted to be with a property that we could do day trips. It was really important to me with young kids, because I knew that you could go out and stay the night and do those things. However, if it was deer season and one of the boys wanted to head out and, hey dad, let's go get, let's go get a pig or let's go get a deer, we could do that in a day. And if maybe we played hooky from school or I could pick them up from school, we could be there by dusk and still be able to hunt. And so from the Bay Area, we're the first big ranch right outside the Bay Area. I mean, when you come south out of the Bay Area and you come across 152 Pacheco Pass, here we are. It was originally the Double S Ranch, and it was Phil Statler and Roger Shrimp. Phil Statler, if you look at the books and you do any research, an amazing man. And they originally, I want to say in the 50s, bought the back part of the ranch and then wound up buying the front part of the ranch great landowners, and, and Phil still holds the records for the most amount of cattle in Anna Mexico. He wrote a book, I read this book, and one he mentions in the book, this is one of his favorite ranches, and he's owned hundreds of thousands of acres. This is a great Phil Statler story. He was with my boys telling, telling the story of driving down the road and a pig going out in front of him, and so he decided he was out of sausage, he just run over it, hit it. And so Phil, he poker games, there's a, there's a, a story of him on the front page of the Oakland Tribune in the sports section, or it was it's famous for being green paper, of him hitting Slim Pickens in a fight at a rodeo. And they and the ultimate honor for Phil was the Cowboy Hall of Fame in Midwest named a wing after him. And so he's the real deal. He's the real deal. We, we miss Phil. Hi, my name is Todd Renfrew with California Outdoor Properties. We're here at the RK Ranch. It was an amazing day. We had rain, we had hail, we had wind, we had sun. The setting was just spectacular. It was, it was really special being out there today with Barry and his family. Barry is just a classic example of why someone buys a ranch. He bought it 20 some years ago. He wanted a place where his kids could go out there and hike and learn about nature and hunt and they have absolutely loved it, and we hope to pass it on to the next group, and they can have their own family legacy. What's really fun driving around with Barry is that he has a story for every little piece of that property. We saw Pride Rock was that big mountain range. Uh, he showed us where his son got his first buck. It's been a joy driving around with him. It's such a, a big property, uh, just all the hills and dales and everything in between. It's an amazing place. 
That pond is unbelievable because when you first see it, it's not that big. It looks like oh, it's just another reservoir. And Barry is talking about how the fishing, how great it is. And he goes out there, three casts. He's got a big old bass on it. His uh, wife's father was out there. He caught a couple bass. It was amazing. So one of the interesting aspects of that property is that Barry has a spring piped into the pond so that it's getting fresh water, which is great for the fish habitat. He has a feeder. The one thing that we did not catch, that they have some big monster catfish in that pond. What a, what a place. What's really neat, when you get to the first gate, you can see those mountains off in the distance. And as you drive closer, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then when you're actually up on top of them, when we drove up there, it's, it's spectacular. It's heartbreaking. I'm born and raised in San Jose. We raised our kids in Las Gatos, California, and we were 90 minutes from the Bay Area. So what's great is we could load up and we could be hunting and fishing in, in an hour and a half, two hours, and we could spend the day and go, go right home. So our family now, my adult kids are 29 and 27 are my boys and my baby girl's 22. And we all decided as a family that we want to have a ranch, a, a family compound where they can raise their kids together. We can be part of it because of the grandkids. So we wound up, unfortunately, buying a property way north of here, almost to Lake Tahoe. So now the distance is four hours. I've been here twice this year. It's a problem. And so at this point, I'm 58. It's time to get off the bandwagon. And so this is one of our heartbreaks. Um, it is what it is.